Clinical Science of Selenium Deficiency. So hopefully um, none of you have seen this, but you, you might have done. Um, typically more these days, it's probably more poor growth rates in lambs. So this tends to be your sort of three to 10, 10 month old lambs. But there has been um, cases, and we still see it occasionally in this part of the world, is, is white muscle disease. So there's a weakness in the lambs. So it can either be the lambs are born dead or weak and they just don't survive. Or you might have lambs a bit older on um, that delayed white muscle disease and they are weak in the hind legs. They can't really stand up properly. If you stress them out, like maybe you bring them to yards uh, for tailing or docking with, the, with their mums, um, they might not have to walk through well or just collapse and fall over. So there might be something going on with selenium there. Another role with um, low selenium is the early embryonic death. So you've got ewes that are um, not getting a lamb in that first, first cycle and they're becoming late lambers or they're just becoming dry dries. So selenium plays a role in the early embryonic death in that first three to four weeks after conception. And it also plays a role in, in the rams um, in having functional sperm. So obviously if the sperm's not functional in your ram, you're not gonna get ewes and lamb. So when you're looking for testing for selenium, um, we can do liver or blood samples. Um, and five, five samples is enough, but it doesn't matter the numbers today. One relatively easy way to test for um, selenium in sheep is um, that first draft of lambs heading away before Christmas or early, early January, or depending when your lambs are heading off, um, you can request um, liver samples to be taken. So the works can collect liver samples for you. And then those liver samples are sent to the veterinary pathology lab and the um, trace elements are tested there. And then those results will go back to the vet clinic, to your vet that you've nominated on a form. That form needs to go with your ASD form to the works. So it's just um, an easy way to have um, liver samples taken and tested for selenium and B12 in sheep or um, other things in cattle. Obviously, we can do liver biopsies on farm. Um, it does involve an anaesthetic, so you need to get your vet involved. Um, so, I mean, take home message, as Charlotte mentioned, I should have mentioned this at the start, any ill thrift issues, ring your vet and have a chat about what might be going on. It might be something we can figure out on the phone or need to visit or make some planning to go, go forward. Um, for your adult use, looking to see if they've got enough selenium pre-mating, you could do some bloods. Um, to be fair, it's not something we do enough of in Marlborough um, for the ewe flocks here, but obviously if you don't have enough selenium on board, then it's going to affect multiple things, um, like, um, as I mentioned earlier. When it comes to figuring out, okay, we need some selenium, when it comes to supplementing selenium, there's, there's a range of options out there now, and this goes for all trace elements, um, lots of different options available. There's not just one answer, and it will depend on your farming operation. Um, and new classes of stock that you've got issues with. Um, so there's oral products. Um, there'll be anthelmintics, which will have selenium in them. Um, there is mineral um, supplements. Um, and you've seen pictures of some up the front, up the top there, LSD, um, is one brand of a mineral supplement. Um, and then you can go for these capsules. Um, so there's this um, that combine usually with other trace elements. So it's a bolus to give to the use. And then we come to injectable products for selenium. Um, so you've got long acting selenium, um, gives you 12 months, sometimes over 12 months worth of selenium. And then you've got different vaccines, which will have selenium as well. So your clostridial vaccines with your five in ones. Um, or you can also put selenium on in, in your fertilizer. So as I said, when it comes to supplement options, there's so many out there. It comes down to what's gonna work best with your management system, work best with your farm. Um, and often once you start a supplementation program, there'll need to be ongoing testing and things as well to, to check that we're getting the required response that you want to see. So next one, um, iodine, I'll talk about, oh, very quickly looking at the time. Um, iodine in a nutshell is involved in your metabolism and protein synthesis of the cells. So, um, huge part of development of the growing fetus. So the fetal brain, lungs, heart, and wool follicles. So hopefully none of you have seen this, but if you have clinical signs of iodine deficiency is goiter in your lambs, um, great big swollen thyroid glands in the neck, 
Um, or you may just see you've got more lambs dying around lambing time, perinatal mortality is up. The lambs can be more susceptible to cold stress, so they just don't get off the ground, don't feed, and therefore die due to exposure. The lambs may be born really small as well, so that decreases their chances of survival. Um, and as mentioned, um, low iodine means they might be born with little pink bare skin, so their chances of survival just um, decrease. So I've got some pictures there of some goita and some lambs. So that's clearly clinical iodine deficiency there when you can see um, those really enlarged thyroid glands. Um, one thing um, commonly seen if you use a grazing on brassicas. So there are some feeds around which are goitrogenic, meaning they'll look more likely to form goiter in sheep and cause an iodine deficiency. So brassicas are up there. So if you've got ewes going on to brassicas um, at mating time, you definitely need to be giving some iodine. Testing for iodine is not that easy. Um, the best indication that something going on is if you're seeing goiter in, in newborn lambs. Um, but having your vet do some postmortems of lambs that you find dead in the paddock you know, around lambing time. And what they're actually doing is obviously looking at other issues as to why the lamb died. But one way to look at iodine deficiency is measuring the weight of the thyroid glands. So they get dissected out. And then you measure that with respect to the weight of the lamb. Um, and we have a ratio, it's anything over 0.8 grams per kilo, there's clinical signs of iodine. But if you're getting lower than that and you're still getting 0.4 to 0.8, so there's a range we look at, you think, hmm, you've got a, a suspicious of subclinical iodine there, so we need to look and see what's going on. You can do blood tests for iodine, but it only really reflects what's been happening the last two or three days, so it's not that, um, not always that useful. Um, the best way will be look and see if you've got issues with lambs dying to see if you need iodine. Um, and when we talk about iodine supplementation, again, um, we've got um, iodine in oral mineral supplements. Um, it's in your um, boluses that you can give. And also there's um, products called Depidine or Flexidine, which are long acting iodine injections. Um, and you'd be either giving that pre-mating or at scanning time, depending on your management system and depending on the reason why you're wanting to give iodine. If you're grazing on brassicas and you maybe need to be giving it, giving it earlier. Cobalt. Um, so we need cobalt. So the microbes in the rumen can actually make vitamin B12. And your vitamin B12 is there for um, energy for making blood glucose for the for the ruminant. Um, typically see a problem with um, cobalt in the summer and autumn. So bush sickness, again, hopefully none of you see this, but you might just see um, poor growth rates, and usually in the weaned lambs, or the wool might just look off, um, sometimes see a watery eye discharge. Um, testing again, um, liver. Liver is the best test for cobalt. Um, it's where B12 is, is stored. So we want to, we're actually looking for levels of B12 and we see um, what the levels are. Again, like I mentioned before, this can be done um, for those first draft of lambs heading off the works and you can look at um, liver samples and we take a um, look at selenium and B12. Supplementation, as mentioned, multiple options. Um, you've got long acting injections, You've got um, such as um, Smart Shot, not on to about brands, but that's an example of a long acting B12 injection. You've got um, clostridial vaccinations that contain um, B12 um, and or selenium. Um, and then you've got your anthelmintics, so anthelmintic capsules or oral anthelmintics. Although to be fair, injection would be preferable for supplementation for B12 over oral um b12 um, so your short acting injection such as like a prolegect would give you maybe four weeks depending on the level of deficiency four four weeks for supplementation and then like something like smart shot three or six months depending on the dose that you are using cattle so i feel like um we've got the breeding cow at this time of year um hopefully she's pregnant and um weaning time be coming up if you haven't already um, and then we've got those those growing cattle. So you've got weaners, and then you've got the next age group up, which if, you, if you're trading and fattening, then hopefully getting them off <clears throat> after the work soon. 
So for cattle, if you're breeding cattle, main one we're going to be looking at is selenium and copper. Um, iodine may play a role. We've got the odd beef property here, which supplements for iodine, um, but I won't go into that too much with, with cattle. Um, and then the growing cattle, again, um, your selenium and copper. Again, maybe iodine and, and cobalt, but to a much less degree. Copper. So this is your, um, copper has so many things it does in the body. I can't go, go through all of them. Um, involved in um, growing nice strong bones. It's involved in the immune system, um, involved in the coat color and um, just ill thriftiness. Um, so copper deficiency seen all around the country for different reasons. Copper deficiency can be primary, um, and, but also can be secondary where there's other things involved, other um, elements such as molybdenum and, and zinc and iron um, can be involved as well. I'm not gonna go into those things, but if um, you discover you have a copper deficiency on your property um, through involvement of your vet, then you, you'll need to be looking further into to why, um, what other elements are, are playing a role there um, as to causing issues with copper. So some of you may have seen you've got um, you know these black cattle that are brown and haven't really lost their winter coats and they're just not looking just not looking as well as they could be. There may be the signs that copper is an issue. Um, again, you can have scouring cattle um, just just looking off and dull and just not doing that well. Um, you may have some animals that seem to be injury prone or you know the odd broken leg or just bones aren't being as strong as they should be. So that could be an issue with copper. And then it comes back to fertility as well. So reproductive issues and just not getting young calf rates that you hope you'd be seeing. Um, yeah, oh, just a note I've written about copper um, deficiency in sheep is not something we see um, in, in Marlborough here. Um, there is a bit of a breed difference with respect to sheep. Um, so such as the Texel is more prone to too much copper to copper Texas toxicity. Whereas the Finnish land race, the Finn sheep more prone to copper deficiency. So um, when it comes to sheep, sort of coppers down the list of, of um, reasons why they might be ill thrift, but definitely not something to forget about. So same, same again, testing, testing um, to see what's happening, go for liver. And again, just like the sheep, we can do um, get the meatworks to collect liver samples and um, see what's happening there. When it comes for copper, unfortunately, we need to be looking at more like 10 samples because there can be big variations in the different um, levels of copper. So um, we need to be going up to 10 to make sure we get a better idea of what's happening. Um, and a good time to be testing copper is now so you can get some copper into these girls um, before they get into late pregnancy and early lactation when those demands for copper really start to start to come on board um, and give you a chance to get some copper into them. How do we get copper into cattle? Um, number of options, once again, you can do straight um, copper injections under the skin. You can do copper capsules, um, copper oxide capsules. And there is also other um, slow release rumen bullets as well. And they can be combined with different um, trace amounts and vitamins and minerals. Um, you can give copper in, in drinking water or in salt licks, but it does depend on the animal actually drinking that water or, or licking the salt licks. So it's not a good form of supplementation and probably not that practical um, in some um, extensive properties. And then with, um, as I mentioned with sheep, selenium and, and cattle, again, poor fertility, um, issues with the quality of, this, of the sperm for bulls, um and um ill thriftiness and, and poor growth and weaners and things like that as well so definitely need supplementation of selenium for your cattle um whether that's um cattle going into the winter breeding cows or you've got fattening cattle so as mentioned previously multiple options for giving um selenium um, we have the long acting injection such as salivin la we've got the intraruminal boluses again as mentioned before um, selenium is in anthelmintics as well, and then um, you can also top dress as well with selenium. So, as mentioned before, with sheep. Do remember though, um, you can give too much selenium. Um, so, especially important, I should have mentioned that with sheep um, and with lambs. So, just be careful about giving too many products with selenium in them because it can be fatal. 
Um, so not, you know, giving more and more is not always a good thing. And if you're not sure, ring your vet and say, I want to do this product and this product and this product together. Um, is that okay? We'll probably go, no. So just, just need to check too much selenium and you can give too much copper as well. So giving more trace elements doesn't always mean you're going to get a better result. Um, so if you're just not sure, just check um, with your vet about the recommendations and so many different products around too. So as I said, um, it depends on your property and your management system. Um, so just a few references today, but yeah, I'd like to thank um, Vet Marlborough and also Ali and Shepherd Agriculture for the invitation, Beef and Lamb for the chance to speak. Great, thank you very much, Mary. Um, so yes, Charlotte, if I wouldn't, could I ask you just to turn your camera back on and we'll just go through a couple of these questions that have come through. Um, I think most of the ones towards the end are more for you, Mary, but um, um, there's one question that came through around um, testing for urine for iodine, Mary. Is that yeah, such a thing? It, it is, but my understanding is not really decent reference ranges for it. So it's hard to get your result and then and figure out what, what it actually means. So yeah, it is it is mentioned as an option, but it's, um, you yeah, know, when I was doing some reading things around it, we, it's just not that easy to interpret. Um, and just not the reference ranges there in New Zealand for what it actually means. Is that, that's my understanding, but yeah. You got it. Okay, and look, we've got another question here um, from Renee asking about um, the, the value of, of testing livers and probably even bloods at the processor when typically a lot of the animals that go to the processor are your prime animals. So what does that mean for anything left on farm? If you yeah, only no, that, that is a, a very good point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a very good point. So if you, I mean, maybe you would do your next lot going on. But the other thing, if you've got lambs that aren't doing that well, then you're probably going to get your vet out and you can do some liver biopsies on lambs um, that are on your farm that aren't doing as well. Um, or, or bloods. I mean, bloods are still an important part of figuring out what's going on. Um, it's even if you did maybe a second draft or something like that. But yes, if you, if you, I mean, this season I know in this part of Marlborough, we've just not had the growth rates um, and farmers are behind on, on stock getting the number of lambs have gone off to the works. So there's still some value in, in doing that, but yes, if um, you could still look at doing something on farm as well. Talk to your vet and get some pricing things as well about what, you know, it can be, it's quite a few hundred dollars um, to do this, trace element testing but the information you get out of it is you know is it's hard to put a price on it um and if your stock aren't growing well and you're having to feed them for longer and buy supplement and you know if there's something you can fix it then yeah i get think the numbers stack up for looking into supplementation and, and, and doing it so yeah yeah and is there another one for you mary um is there any benefit around um sampling younger stock versus more mature animals yeah, definitely go for sampling your younger stock. They're growing and they've got more demands on them. So um, you're going to get more, um, generally more information about what's going on there. But in saying that, if you've got the likes of um, cull cows going to work, so you've done your pregnancy testing, you've got some cows that aren't in calf, um, again, you can still look at testing what the liver samples for those cull cows and you'll get information about what's happening for the rest of the mixed age cows in that, in that property but it doesn't necessarily relate to what's happening for the growing cattle on that property so mm. you can ideally you'd go and test every class of stock at different times of the year but you just it's financially can't do that so um and practically so sometimes you can kind of extrapolate a little bit but but it depends on the operation so if you're testing cow cows and that relates to your mixed age cows if you're going to be testing young stock then ideally you need to be looking at that class of stock to see what they're doing Okay, guys, look, uh, last chance to get a couple of questions into that, that chat box. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just have a quick sum up. And look, firstly, thank you very much, Charlotte and, and Mary, for your presentations. I think I took a lot from that stuff. And, um, you know, I've been working with us in this space for quite a few years now, and there's so much more you can always cover off in here. So, um, you know, a couple of points uh, from Charlotte your presentation around and i'm not going to go through your whole um 
graph around all the points that affect automobile growth, but you know the, the key ones were very much around feed budgeting. Um, you know, and a lot of that for me was around how the, the, the feed composition changes through that period and, and protein levels spike and uh, dry matter levels in particular uh, drop right down. So we think we're feeding well, but we're actually not. Um, so, and also your second point that you really hammered home was around um, uh, internal parasites. And, and fortunately I'll give everyone a brief soon, but the um, we've, our next webinar is on internal parasites. So your, your timing on that comment on that topic couldn't be any more timely. Um, so they, they were the real take home points. And then um, around the internal parasites, you know, I never really understood the, the, the significant increase in the, that parasite challenge um, in that autumn period, you know, and seeing that graph was, was pretty outstanding really. So I hope other people took that with a somewhere around the 15 to 20% increase or, um, or yeah, increase in, in the parasites through that time. Mary, look, the um, you know, key point I think that you mentioned and you tried hammering home a little bit is keep testing, guys. Test, 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 test. And, yeah. and I think what we do okay. as humans, we, um, we test and we think everything's going well. So we kind of just let that go a little bit. It's a little bit like fertilizer and we, we stop fertilizing because we, we think that we've got you know, enough, enough feed and we can make do with dropping fertilizer out of the system. Same with testing. Just because things are going well, it doesn't mean you should stop testing. So... Uh, I definitely got that point. Um, and around the sheep system, you know, your, your main ones to worry about are selenium, iodine, and cobalt. Um, and in your cattle system around selenium and, and copper in particular. And, and I myself have seen copper toxicity. Um, so just shake those bottles when you're giving copper. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, look, we've got a, another question coming through here. Um, What's the minimum time to give trace elements before tupping ewes, Mary? Um, well, ideally, if you can, four weeks um, out. But you know, time's pushed and you've sort of forgotten these things. You know, get them in as soon as you can, really. Um, yeah, sort of two, two to four weeks if you can. You also want to remember that you know, mating time, you want to have all your ducks lined up and everything ready to go. So any extra yarding and all that kind of process that you're doing, um, can upset them so have everything sort of lined up before then the other thing to remember is do you need to do a pre-mating drench um, as well um, and if you don't know that frequently counts and, and do some test testing 